Hi everybody, it's Nancy, your favorite innkeeper from Old Square Inn in Mountjoy, Pennsylvania, in beautiful Lancaster County. How are you on this wonderful Friday today? Well, I am doing just great. I went to the grocery store this morning, shopping granny time, got up a little late, but it went really well. And in our giant grocery store, they have everything blocked off. So you go down one aisle, up the other aisle, down the other aisle. They're counting people uh, to get in. Hi, Joe. Uh, they're only letting a certain amount of people in. She's got her clicker going with her. It was pretty great. Yep, so I stopped at the store this morning and I uh, got a couple of things for the next couple of weeks and we're good to go. So today, we're going to be talking about depression glass. That's what we love to serve our breakfast on at Old Square Inn. And here is part of my collection over here. But before we do that, I wanted to take you on a little tour of the room I'm standing in right now. Hi, Diane. Um, this is the butler's pantry to the old house. And you're gonna see two things that most people never see. Well, there's my cat. Now, I don't know if you just heard her. You're going to see, number one, my office cleaned, and you're going to see the door to the butler's pantry open to what had been the dining room. All right, so I'm going to just take you on a little tour here. All right, we'll start right behind me. This is, there's a little window over there. Yeah, this is usually never clean uh, to the extent that when I had cleaned it and the kids were over, Parker said, you clean this, why didn't you tell me? All right, and right over here in this space behind me, we're next to the window, um, the refrigerator used to be over here. Then as we go around, this door, go on kitty, you go out, leads into the kitchen. There she goes, yeah, goodbye. And there's the little piece of glass, you can look through that and make sure you don't run into anybody. Here's part of my apron collection. And then behind me over here, look at this. How cool is this little door? This is the linen chute. Aren't old houses great? Love that. And here are my cupboards back here where we keep the collection. Hi, Marsha. And behind me here, all right. This is uh, the door that is normally blocked and it's boarded off and everything else. I just opened it up so I could use this space and um, it's just so much fun. So this was the, the old dining room. You might be able to see my game of battleships over there. Hi, Linda. Um, when we get people in again, I'm gonna have to close that off and act like I'm, I'm doing business again, right? All right, hi, Susan. Okay, so this morning we're going to talk about depression glass, and this is just so much fun. I started collecting this even before I was an innkeeper. It was probably in my last year of teaching, and um, my former neighbor, Karen, had a little cool collection of it. Hi, Kathy. And she showed me her collection. I thought, that is just really kind of cool. So we would go from place to place, and I started picking up pieces. But I wanted to read this to you first. I thought this was kind of interesting. First of all, these patterns here, there are over 100 patterns of depression glass made by 20 different manufacturers. And it was, uh, they call it depression glass because it was made during the depression between the 20s and 30s. And the glass manufacturers, the main glass manufacturers were Jeanette, Hazel Atlas, Macbeth, uh, Hawking Glass Company, they're Anchor Hawking now. And they had just perfected how to manufacture glass. And, um, they were able to turn it out in large quantities. So depression glass isn't nice glass. There's a lot of imperfections in it because they just got the process down, but that's part of what makes it cool. All right, anyway, I wanted to read you this from a little bit of history of the depression glass. The glass name was derived from the period of time it was manufactured and handed out around the time of the Great Depression. 
the Great Depression was a period when the world economy hit the lowest low. Does that sound familiar? Most of the businesses ran bankrupt and the majority of companies folded. Hmm. It was a time when there was little economic activity and many people were very poor and without any jobs to sustain themselves and their families. So depression glass was made in the early period between the 19th century, between 1920 and 1930. It was produced for the masses during the period of depression and it was very affordable. It was like, um, I can't even say Tupperware because that's expensive, but like that, that Gladware, it was cheap glass, something you'd get at a dollar store. Um, the standard and the quality was very low. And what used to happen was as an incentive to their, their, their guests or their customers, people, stores would put pieces of this glass inside of products. Like you might find a glass inside a box of oatmeal, or you might find um, a small plate inside a box of cereal. Or if you had money to go to the movies, you paid your five cents to go to the movies, they might hand you a glass. I don't know if you remember back in the day, but sometimes you would be able to go to the gas station and fill up your car for $3 and they would give you like a jelly glass, like a Flintstone glass or something like that. Hi, Sandy. All right, so let me show you what we have over here. Um, these are the pieces that I love to serve breakfast on. This is, let's start over here, this one is Adams. And there are several ways that you could determine what is depression glass and one isn't. Um, one is by the color. Most depression glass was green or yellow or pink or crystal or uh, cobalt blue. Hi, Randy and Becky. So this is the Adams pattern. You can also tell depression glass by the silhouette. Different patterns had different silhouettes and or outlines and then you can tell by the pattern if you can see this pattern i don't know how that shows up on the screen yep but this identifies what the atoms would be as well as the edge on here the square plate this is one of my favorite plates to serve breakfast and i think it's because food looks nice on here a lot of our food is yellow like eggs or french toast um, and then we might put some strawberries on it. So that is a good background plate. And depression glass, a lot of it was made in sets. I don't have sets of everything in this. I am lucky enough to have about 11 plates. I'm looking for a few more. Um, depression glass, even though it was worth pennies then, is highly collectible now. And pieces can go anywhere between like a dollar a piece and... $55 a plate or hundreds of dollars depending on the plate piece. So when I serve breakfast, I like to pick this. And then if we have a fruit starter, I use these green sherbets. And this pattern is called block optic. Can you see the little blocks on the side? Hi, Joanne. And um, we put it on this kind of saucer. This is not an Adam's saucer. This is actually Cameo. And if you can see this little pattern back there, it, or sometimes they call this Dancing Girl. So this, our starter will go on this, and then we'll bring out our main dish. And sometimes we serve a side or a dessert on this pattern grab this paper see if this shows up any better and this is horseshoe and you can tell this pattern by this little horseshoe over this way aren't these pieces beautiful oh you just bought a, a cake plate in adams you paid good buy on that five bucks for that cake plate i know and i love it when people don't know what they have and you can nab some really good things right all right, so Adams love that. Another very popular pattern was this cherry pattern. And I know a lot of people like to collect this and, and pick this. Now, if you're new to collecting this stuff, you have to watch out. Hi, Vicki. Um, because there were reproductions. The cherry reproduction is really easy to tell. If you look at these cherries on the back, is it easier to see it that way? All right, do you see how 
they're in four pieces here, three here, one here. If you look at these on um, one that was manufactured late, they it looks like a kid drew them, seriously. So cherry comes in pink. It also comes in green. I li also like to serve breakfast on this because this makes a, a nice background also. Hi, Joan. Your favorite is pink, Linda? Yeah, I like... They're like my children. I like them all. And our starter is usually in these beautiful Florentine cups. And actually, I got these from Karen, my friend who I used to go go trolling out depression glass hunting with. We don't do too much of that anymore because I got a lot of it and she's trying to get rid of hers now. Um, this is Florentine and you can tell by this little pattern right here. There's Florentine 1 and Florentine 2. One is a flower, one is a poppy. But aren't these gorgeous? And they're so delicate. Now, I don't like to put my depression glass in the dishwasher because it leaves those, um, like, dishwashery scratches on them. So when we serve something in this, we grab one of our underliners. Um, this is American Sweetheart. You can tell by the shape and by this pattern over here. So we would serve our starter on there. Uh, I think I have some other pink underliners also. Oh, here's our cherry one. Yep, and again, look at the pattern on the back. You can tell that that is not um, a reproduction. I bought what I thought was, high, <laughs> tell Karen to see, yeah, yeah, actually, and we sell depression glass in our gift shop over here. So if you're gonna be looking for something fun for Mother's Day, give me a call and I'll tell you what we have. I'll tell you what Karen is selling. You can pick up something pretty cool. All right, um, what else did I wanna show you? Okay, look at this. This is, princess and again you can tell this by the silhouette and although it's kind of the same shape as adam it doesn't have the same scallops and you can also tell princess by this pattern in the middle and these little drops down here we don't use this a whole lot because it's yellow hi michael and um like I said, a lot of our food is yellow, so we don't often put serve this, but I like this pattern also. And if we use this, our starter goes in this kind of sherbet. This is Princess also, but uh, sometimes those plates are hard to come by. This is a Florentine plate that we might put it on, and this is in yellow. And look at this. How cool is this? Can you see that little basket over there? This pattern is called Lorraine. Uh, I love this one. It's so pretty. Hard to get plates in those, too. Now, if you're ever out depression glass hunting and you come across a butter dish with a lid, it, it's either a really, really good find or it's a reproduction. The lids to things, like the lids to the, to the sugar dish, dishes and the butter dishes, they're hard to find because they would break so easily. You know, people would pick them up, drop them. That was the end of that. So if you find a real piece with a lid, you got a good buy. Uh, also, look at this. These are berry bowls. Berry bowls and cherry, aren't those great? I got a set of this depression glass in this cherry with these berry bowls from one of my guests. How amazing is that? She was cleaning out her uh, grandmother's things and had kept it for a long time and decided that she would like to gift me with that because we could use it here and we use it every day. All right, another one of my, oh, and I got some dessert plates from another one of my guests who is here frequently. Every time she comes, she brings me a gift and I really love her. Not because she's bringing me a gift, but just because our guests are some of the loveliest people ever. All right, let me show you this one next. This is Ruby, and you might have seen this, I'm sure, and it's just Ruby. It's called Royal Ruby, and they also make a kind of a jade green in this kind of glass. Um, my friend Karen had given me some plates that belonged to her mom, and I love it when people give me things because it's just like that much more special. This belonged to your mom. This belonged to your grandma. Um, these were her mama's dishes. And she said that her mama used to entertain a lot. 
and have the ladies over and she would serve lunch on these dishes. Love that, so pretty. And here's something interesting too. This was a dinner plate. Now, if you compare that to the sizes of dinner plates we have right now, we might serve lunch on this. This was a dinner plate. This was a luncheon plate. And, you know, it, science and shows that if you use a smaller plate when you're eating, you'll eat less also because most people eat until the plate is clean. Use a smaller plate, you'll eat less. I don't know if that works during our uh, quarantine time, but anyway. And these are the sherbets that go with them. Here's the little square plate. And even in depression glass, there are going to be some variations in pattern. Do you see this little um, kind of like bead? there so we have that in the sherbet and then we also have this plain one no bead right there so cool right i love looking at this stuff all right two more pieces i want to show you but do you see all these glasses up here also also kind of hard to find the glasses um and again i mix and match my pieces i don't have one whole set of anything so i might use some of the glasses that are these green ones up here in the dogwood pattern with my Adams and with my horseshoe and everything else. It just sets a pretty table. All right, dig this. This, that is Monax. Isn't that gorgeous? It's this, and this is the American Sweetheart pattern. And you can tell by the edge of the plate and you can tell by this pattern over here too. And I love the iridescence of this. This is such a pretty plate. And this was made like in nine inches, nine and a half inches, 10 inches. Not all of the sets had all of the pieces to it, but when I can find them, if I know that I'm going to use those pieces, I nab them. And these, I'm gonna have to put this down and grab that because I don't want them tumbling. But again, here's the thing. I don't want them tumbling, but I want to use them because, you know, like we keep saying, use your good stuff. It, it's going to be in a garage sale when you die. Nobody wants this later. Um, look at the sherbet to that. Isn't that pretty? And the underliner that it goes on. Just so gorgeous. I know. I love those. And if you can take a look up this way, way up on top over here, you can see that? I have coffee cups up there, um, the little ruby coffee, coffee cups to match everything. It's so much fun. Um, and, all right, I got to climb up there and show you this thing. I have a handy dandy chair there. I wasn't going to pull out cups, but this is so fun. I, how did people ever reach up here? I don't know. They had to have a step ladder, right? Ugh. Ugh. All right, I'm going to grab one of these ruby cups they're pretty cool and I love these because they're square I know isn't that so much fun so this went with the luncheon set a cup of the saucer and the square plate isn't that a blast we, we need to get our stuff out your parents had that too oh that is so cool all right, now, I showed you most of my pattern. All of this over here, can you see this? This came from um, my son's neighbor's garage sale. He was packing up, here we go again, you know, they're going to get rid of it in a garage sale when you're gone. He was packing up his grandmother's things and called um, and said, do you want to buy this set? I said, I don't know, and it had candlesticks and pictures and vases and serving pieces. I can't even fit them all here. And I said, well, what do you want for me? He said, uh, 25. And really at that point, I didn't need any more depression glass. Although, you know, like a little addict, you always want a little bit more. And I said, I, I think it's beautiful, but I just can't really afford that. Don't, I don't want to spend the money on that. And he said, you know what? You can just have it. I'll give it to Graham. He can take it over for you. How fabulous is that? People like to see you using their things. All right, 
my last and favorite pattern. Well, I do have assorted ones there, but look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? This is royal lace. Let me see if you can see that any better with something behind it. And cobalt blue is one of the most desired pieces you can get. Look at the lace pattern up there. Can you see that? This is just so beautiful. And this goes from anywhere easily between like $10 and more to, to $55 a plate. And when you're looking for depression glass, sometimes people don't know what they have and you can get like this super great bar bargain. Um, but sometimes you might see little tiny chips out of the inside. They call them flea bites. That lowers the price of the and the value of the glass. But you know what? I don't care. I'm using it and I love it. These are my favorite things. All right. So I also have, come on over here. This is a Royal Lace Sherbet. Look how cool is this? One of these little ice cream things. And there's the Royal Lace Saucer. And we do have the cups up there to go with it, too. Um, you can find some of this on Etsy. You can find some of this on eBay. Just If you're buying it, just be sure you know what you're buying. Sometimes, you know, we do have reproductions. And I once I thought I was getting a great bargain on a pitcher and some juice glasses. I paid $24 for it. I thought, they don't know. Well, they knew what they had because it was a reproduction. It's still pretty, but it wasn't the genuine thing. So that um, Royal Lace Glass also has, oh, let me find this one. There's another cobalt blue pattern that was manufactured. This is Hairpin. And because I don't have enough of the other ones, um, I found these also. These are not as collectible as Royal Lace, but it's cobalt blue, and I think that it's just beautiful. All right, up there I have some Royal Lace glasses, Princess glasses, salt and pepper shakers. Just, it's just so much fun. I think I started, I like dishes since I was a kid. I remember asking my mom for these little crystal shot glasses. I was probably 18 years old and I wanted them for Christmas. Who the, who, who wants, who wants crystal for Christmas when you're 18? Apparently I did, right? All right. I hope you enjoyed that little tour of depression glass and tour of my uh, butler's pantry over here. And I just wanted to tell you what's coming up next week and the week after. So we have cooking demonstrations um, at least until the 20th of May. So next week we're going to do blueberry muffins and a frittata along with shortbread. Following week, biscuits and gravy. And I'm gonna show you how to make those peanut butter balls that we missed and some gluten-free peanut butter cookies. Uh, the following week, baked French toast. This is gonna be Mother's Day week. So this will be a nice breakfast for Mother's Day baked French toast, and egg souffle and puff pastry. Uh, the following week, second week in May, baked apple, apple pie. It's so cool, so delicious, and looks beautiful. And one bowl brownies. We used to teach that to the kids in eighth grade. We can we do one bowl brownies with peppermint or otherwise. To, I like it with peppermint. Um, and then the last week that we have scheduled right now is um, poached eggs with blender hollandaise sauce and Joe's Easy Cheesecake. I can't wait to see you again. Thanks again for spending time with me this morning. If you liked this demonstration, please share it on your timeline. Give us some hearts. Thanks so much. And I will see you on Monday. Have a fabulous weekend. I'm Nancy, your favorite innkeeper from Old Square Inn in Mount Joy. Bye-bye.